What's happening, people? Welcome to Five and welcome to another episode of The Take On. I am in the hot seat today because you have got a lot to say for yourself, Mr. Joel Bayer. <laughs> you think your title challenge is back on. So we need to talk. We need to talk. We've got Danny Murphy there joining us remote. And we've got Anton here, obviously, as well. And we will be speaking to Matisse later as well. We ain't letting him off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> we are not letting him off the hook. But we've got to start, right? Your brother, man. He's been he's he's he he's he's, he's going at Simon Jordan. Obviously, we got we got Simon Jordan representative here yeah. in the building <laughs> as well with Danny. Um, some back and forth with Martin Keown, and there was a lot said. There was a lot said. So what, what was said again? Like? Well, initially, initially it went down to Martin Keown claiming that Arsenal are now winners um, because of their mentality. They've improved. They haven't got their hands on any trophies. But they're winners in his eyes, which is cute. Yeah, that's okay. what Martin Keown said. Rio says, what do you mean, mate? Yeah. To win, you have to actually win. Or have I lost the plot here? Or yeah. you can say you've improved. You can say you've got better. You can say you've made progress. But you're not a winner until you win. And then Simon Jordan made references to the dictionary about what a winner is. Lovely. And then Rio goes, well, when I won, mate, there was no references of the dictionary. <laughs> we won. So, Danny, what's your thoughts on it? Like, who are you siding with on this one? Don't worry, we won't tell Simon. We won't tell Rio either. Let us know what you think. Do you know what? Rio's the only, the second person who's got Simon to actually admit he's wrong. Not the <laughs> other one. Um, oh, really? <laughs> You can't, you, Rio's right. You've, if you're a winner, you can't be classed as winners till you've won, won something. I think if you, you can have a winning mentality. If you found yourself <clears throat> playing in the non-league and you end up in the Premier League, you've, you've done something special, haven't you? You've got a winning mentality to get to the best you can be. I understand that. But you can't be called a winner if you haven't won anything. It just, just doesn't make any sense. So Rio's right, and I'd, I'd happily tell Simon that if I was there with him. Unfortunately, I couldn't be today. But um, yeah, the, 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 you can't be called a winner until you've lifted a trophy above your head, can you? He, uh, Simon said he was 45% right on this one, and Rio's 55% right on, on that one. That, that just sums Simon Jordan up, isn't it? If, if, if you're, the law of averages, you just got to go, okay, I was, I was wrong on this one. Not try and justify Yeah, like 100% wrong yeah, as well. Yeah, 100% <laughs> wrong. And I look at it like this. Like, did I win in terms of my career and becoming a footballer and actually achieving, a foot, uh, achieving success to become a footballer? Yes, I did. I won it because I'm part of the 0.05% who played in the Premier League, who dreamed about it as a kid. But if you said as an athlete, am I a winner? I can't sit here and say that I am. Because I didn't win anything as as a professional. I won one thing, which was, was um, the playoff, the playoff yeah, final. final yeah. But which is a big game, by the way. Yeah. Let me just put that out in there. that in that game in, in that, that game, day. Game. That's a win. Exactly. You were a winner that day. Exactly. That. But then moving forward, a year later, I went to FA Cup final. I was thirty seconds away from lifting the trophy, and Stevie G pops up with a goal. I didn't win that game. My medal now, I don't know where it is. I give it to my little brother. I, don't, I didn't want it because it wasn't a winner's medal. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. That's a winner's mentality, but I'm not a winner in That's... my eyes. You, you've, you've got a winning mentality that separates you from thousands, hundreds of thousands of others to get to the level you did. And that, that can't be taken away from you ever. But if you're talking about, when you're talking about footballers and the, the, the elite, and when you call people as a group winners, can't call Arsenal a group of winners when they haven't won anything. You can you can individualise them and say they've done well to get where they've gone and use what we've just said. But yeah, Rio, Rio's spot on. Simon actually saying he's 40%. What did he say? 45 45%. 45%. Right. <laughs> That's a massive win, isn't it? That is Simon saying he's wrong. It's a win. Yeah. Um, look, we haven't won the league, but we've got four FA Cups in 10 years. So what, what would you... Joel, what would you Joel, classify? It's Joel, just a question. Joel, I'm just asking. Joel. Can I well, actually, ask? actually, Joel, the question was going to come to you because as an Arsenal fan, hearing obviously your beloved Martin Keown, you know, say, you that know, surprised he's me. trying to big in. Like he, he is a serial winner. He knows what it takes to win. Um, as an Arsenal fan, hearing us all kind of unanimously say, 
no, mate, you, you ain't winners yet until you get the Premier League. Like, you're not. How do you feel about it as Arsenal? Are you, I are, commented, you just, are you so proud about this that you class them as winners? Or I, are you just, I commented on or Rio's are they post because Rio posted this on his Instagram the <laughs> other day, Danny, and I just wrote, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm going to have to come back. Oh, you guys come off it, <laughs> mate. Sitting on the fence. Okay, now's uh, your chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you got a microphone in front of you. Yeah, you that know, to think. I, I think we're, we're, we could be on our way to become winners. I think the the guys we have, they're still boys. They're not men yet. You and sound that's like another, Jordan, bro. And that's, like another, Jordan. Way, no, and that's another way of saying that they're not winners yet. They could be, but they're not winners yet. Yeah. And we're still forging are they, the winning mentality. Winners, yeah. So, are, so they, are, they, are they are they forty five percent winners? <laughs> Mate, come on, man. What's your t-shirt say as well? Big up, Hyper Nero. Uh, we are just, we are winning, actually. We are winning, you know, well, you're not, are you? Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> you're, we, won we, we are improving. Yeah, that's what that's what that should that's what the t-shirt. Shout out, Harry Panero. So, yeah. New line of t-shirts, Harry. Yeah. We are improving for the Arsenal fans. So yeah, I think I think it's pretty much setting it really. But yeah, that that's it. I just wanted to touch to touch yeah. on that topic, but that's it. But yeah. yeah. I, I agree to finish that off. I think for someone so um, so clever, Simon Jordan, to say that, you know, not winning what football is about, trophies, means you're a winner, I think is one of the stupidest things you could ever say for Just someone so one clever. More thing. Is he trying to say that he was 45% of him was a winner then because he owned a football club but never won anything? Danny, is that what he was saying? Is that what he's saying? Because I think he thought Martin was getting bullied. And I think he thought, you know what? I'm going to try and side with Martin in an argument I can't win and ended up tying himself in knots. And I think he probably looks back and thinks, why the hell did I do that? He's probably he, he's probably, he probably had a sleepless night over it. It'll be, uh, look, he likes Rio, doesn't he, Simon? You know that anyway. And he uh, he's admitted that he was he was right in his own little way. Uh, not many people get that with Mr. Jordan. And actually, you know, with Rio, he, what, what a day he's having. He's got Simon... You know, apologising, and then of course the amazing accolade today going in the I don't know, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, as his brother, I'm proud, man. It's something that you know he had a dream as a kid to become a Premier League player or just to be a professional. I think in one of his uh, um, Air Force One shoe that he had years ago, the saying was, "If I was just play one minute of professional football, I'll die a happy man." Wow. And to now go from that to now being a um, inducted into Hall of Fame of the Premier League you know uh, for me and for my family I speak for my family we're beyond proud um, proud is an understatement to see what he'd done and, and I said it in my post today for me he is the best there's no one like him as a defender and when it comes to defenders I don't want to hear anybody else being mentioned as the best the reason being is because anyone in world football today who's spoken about as the best they are mirrored to Rio Ferdinand and no other. So because of that, Rio is the best centre-back in Premier League history. Right, well, talking of winners, that's what we've been talking about uh, on today's show. Pep Guardiola versus the gaffer, the boss, Sir Alex Ferguson. Ooh. Obviously top, top draw winners. Ooh. Danny. I'm leaving the room. <laughs> you stay right here. Danny, let's start with... Danny, who's the most influential manager out of those two? Um, do you know what? It's a difficult one because what Fergie did with a group of young players had never been done before in terms of producing a team of their own mixed with a few stars and a few signings to dominate the, the English game and even become champions of Europe, it was, was unheard of. And then he actually, he did even one better in terms of reinventing another team after that, which was, which was incredible. Um, with Pep, Pep's got this way of playing that people have emulated and admired for, year, for years. Um, so, don't, do you know what? I think Pep would have to, after, for me, although he's got this philosophy and this way of playing that's become so loved and so admired and copied, I'd probably still edge Fergie because until Pep's gone and won a Champions League or two. Well, he's, he's won two. Oh, he's got, he's, he's won got two. A, do you mean with City? Because he's got, he's City, got a yes. couple. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, wait, with wait. City because you, Fergie, Fergie done it, you know, we're talking about, okay, you can argue Pep's Barcelona reign and what he did there, but would, would Fergie been able to do that with Messi and the Esther Xavi? I'm, don't know. Um, I'm going to speak last on this because, you know, I don't want to be biased. I'm I'm anchoring. So, you know, I would like uh, 
Stop he, sitting he, on would, the fence, I, Flex. Well, no, I can do it. Say it. I could do it. Look, listen, for me, Sir Alex Ferguson is the greatest sports coach slash manager in all of sport. Phil Jackson? Yeah, that's, okay, you've got Phil Jackson, Lakers, people like that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you've got your cluffs, yeah. You've got all these, all these you know, Pep Guardiola, et cetera, et cetera. Sir Alex Ferguson, that there, what Danny said, is the bit I want to home in on. To continually reinvent and to fend off as well these this new influx of manager this this new type so when jose came he had to find a way do you know what i mean when uh, he had to go with he go he, yeah, jose he, kind of had his number though yeah but he still be. managed to win again he still managed to he win did, again he while he was there again. when everyone thought this is it it's done he still managed to find a way what, and actually and actually when you think about what danny's saying there in terms of bringing in young kids that that is the master Manchester United DNA. That is the Busby Babes. That is what Manchester United's DNA is built upon. To do that with the class of 92, with youngsters, not going to spend this amount of money, not going to spend that amount of money, not walking into a club, um, which at the time, because let's, let's, let's have it right. So Alex Ferguson didn't got sacked. In his like, in his, do you know what I mean? Like he didn't first walk year. into a team that, would, that had been winning. And if you look at Pep, the, the style of football, Yes, fantastic. And now that's the modern progressive way. But in terms of the resources that have always been available to him and the type of player that have always been available to him, I would argue that his was at a premium compared to Sir Alex Ferguson in his early days. So Alex Ferguson had to earn the right to make Manchester United that great mm -hmm. to then keep in that period attracting, going to get Rio for a record fee, going to get Van Istroy, going to, you know what I mean? Even even when he got Ronaldo, he's a spotty face, 18 Jemba, year old kid. And look, Ronaldo, oh, nice. Ronaldo won his first Ballon d'Or at Man United. Cleberson. Yeah, won a, won a league with Anderson. You know what I'm saying? Players, I said so, To be oh, fair, I yeah. forget him though. <laughs> Me personally, um, in terms of when you talk about, I think it swings and roundabouts with the two of them. I don't think you can separate the two. And I think the reason why is because they've both done fantastic things for the game. You know, so Alex Ferguson, he's, he's, the way he's, he's reshaped teams, the way that he's um, had to start again and bring and change things up and still go on to win. He made Man United what they are in terms of this juggernaut, for obviously the history of the Busby Babes and stuff mm. like that was already there. Then we went but, ages without doing anything. But then he yeah. he galvanised and made Man, Man United what they are today, which is the juggernaut, which is why there's a £5 billion bid on the table. It's because of Sir Alex Ferguson. Pep has had that all put in place for him at Barcelona before he got there. At Bayern. At the, Bayern uh, before he got there. Maybe not Man City. Not City. Like, he's come there and everything that he's learn on the way he's put into Man City and has been fantastic but then why he's a great is his evolution of football that he's brought into the game Yeah, winning the Premier League with a false nine Win it, about to win the Premier League, about to win the Premier League. <laughs> you can't League. say about to win in the Premier League where there's still games to go at. Okay, that's what I'm saying, not, about not, to. I didn't say not, he's won it. Yeah, well, why are you getting you salty? You, Man's getting you salty. You've got, no, so you got to be very careful with how you... Well, you, know, you weren't careful when you got your hands on the mini he, trophy and, bringing and it around every what, Premier League ground. You weren't careful, were you? What kind of a fan are you, mate? Your, your team's playing. <laughs> No, I, I said and I you think, said on the phone that you think no, you could cause I an upset I think we could I think we could right, I think mate. we really could but you still got to go to Newcastle let me let me quickly before we go back to no, Danny let me finish let oh, me finish I'm not finished, so, go on, go on. I'm not finished. yeah the way he's he's in the process is that better in the process <laughs> of winning the Premier League again with what he's doing with John Stones, he's now got a nine playing, but to get the overload, he's putting, when he's got the ball, he's putting a centre back into midfield when they've got the ball. Going from a four to a three. Yeah. The way he's, he's evolution of football and changing the style and changing players' um, fluidity and, and, and stuff is why he needs to be spoken about in the same ream as Sir Alex mm. Ferguson. So okay. I think it's both. I yeah. think it swings and roundabouts right, for them nice too. Nice fence, mate. Um, There's no I fence think, there. There's I, facts no, no, on there. No, but facts. I think there is facts. And I think if you look at Sir Alex, if you're talking about influence, no one can influence a club the way he has done. When you're talking from top to bottom, he is the boss. Do you know what I mean? The amount of times that Rio makes reference of he will be in the office whilst one of the other guys are taking training, but you can see him from the office shouting and pointing if something's not going. And then he gets back to whatever he was doing at his desk, Yeah, you know, but then we're never going to see that again. 
You know, I mm. think Sir Alex and Arsene were the last to really control a club from top to bottom. Whereas with Pep, no one's influenced the game like him tactically. I, I think don't I think Arsenal stepped on. I think Arsenal. No, no, yeah, it's true. On. No, he's up there. Yeah, because we're going to no, get no, to no, him no, about where where does Arsene Wenger rank in terms of the influence? Because actually, if we're talking is... about revolutionising football in that period, yeah. Danny, you'll know about this. Obviously, playing in that era when 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 he came about as well, yeah. what he did to players, the way they play the game. You know Thierry Henry coming in as a as a as a Wing. wide man, yeah. You know, and coming in off the left and finessing shot that that's a whole new ball game. I, I, I say before I give it to Danny, I'll yeah. say sir, sorry, Arsene Wenger is the only manager who never won a Champions League. That's probably going to go down as, as one of the go man, yeah, yeah, class yeah. manager. Yeah. Danny, your thoughts, please. Well, I think uh, they all deserve the utmost respect, and it, it's you know, we're nitpicking at these wonderful, amazing men who've contributed so much to the game. Wenger, Wenger, I think, was amazing for the way he kind of revolutionised and got everyone forward thinking in terms of off off the field stuff. Never mind on it, you know the way the intensity of training became faster but shorter. Julier copied him at Liverpool. Um, the diet, the way he kind of managed people was differently. It wasn't, <coughs> it wasn't it wasn't the Fergie way, like the tyrant way. You know, you listen to the Arsenal boys talk about his more hands on, calm, you know, bull you up approach. I um I think he deserves great respect because if it wasn't for him at the time, United would have been you know on their own for years doing running away with it, and and Anton spoke well about Pep as well. I th I think the thing is with Fergie for me the the uh, the other thing when he walked through the door there you know Pep Pep had had success, uh, sorry City had had success before Pep. You know Pep walked into Aguero and David Silva for God's sake. You know Fergie was walking into Mark Robbins and Mike Phelan. You know, let's get it right. He he completely transformed the club. Um, and Wenger, to a degree, had a big job to do in that respect. But, you know, we, we are nitpicking at their, their, their strengths and weaknesses. Well, they didn't have many weaknesses. But it, ultimately, when you look at it as a bigger picture, although they've all done amazing things, I, I still think Ver, Fergie edges it. Uh, my question for you, Danny, is you said that Julier copied Wenger a bit. Obviously, you guys have played, so we're going to be tapping into your experience. In what way did Julier copy Wenger? Well, off the field, for sure. They they were good friends and they worked together setting up Claire Fontaine and the, friend of the French Revolution, if you like, of, of the youth development. Yeah. They were pivotal in that. And um, I think they shared the same philosophy in terms of looking after yourself off the pitch the dietary stuff, um, you know, the sports science, every being on time, all those things you think are normal things that oh, we were all over the place as a club until he got there. But but this was all part of what, what we didn't know at the time that Wenger had already brought into Arsenal. The training ground got redone straight, more or less straight away. The whole thing changed in about 12 months. And they had this real belief that if you do things right on the training pitch and off the field, and, you know, you have a togetherness. And uh, the other thing I think he copied very well, or, or they both had the same philosophy with, was, you know, this feeling of unselfishness within a club. So it's becoming more of a squad game that he was nonstop of. It's about us as a group. Now, if you want to, if you want to have a row about not playing or being dropped, you know, you have to do it privately. And that was that was something I think Arsenal had that great squad where you, even those lads who didn't play all the time, it didn't seem to ever cause them a problem. And we had that initially with Julier. So I think he copied many aspects of, of what Wenger did. We just didn't quite have the quality, same quality on the pe pitch that he did because he recruited these brilliant young players that we didn't know about. I think Wenger deserves a lot, a lot of credit, man. Because like you said, I think you, people can laugh at Arsenal for not winning the, the Champions League, etc. But like Danny says there, I, I didn't even know that. Yeah, did you, Claire, Claire Fontaine, did you know that's, that? Massa, I have no idea. Because obviously you guys, if you're not aware, Claire Fontaine is a, uh, one of the biggest, probably it's like, the biggest it's like French like St. George's Park. Yeah. Yeah, Similar to St. George's Park. And the production line of that. Oh, your yeah. Nicholas Anelkas, your Thierry yeah. Henry's, they've the best, all come. The best young Mbappe. players leave school to go there. Yeah, yeah. Pogba. boarding school. Pogba was yeah. there as well. Think like so. Lily Shaw oh, back in the day. Remember Lily Shaw? Yeah, dude, what a bad place. Yeah, it's terrible. Wow. Yeah, insane. So to be honest, so the answer is, I suppose, just shading with uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, as Danny's saying, you know. But we want to hear what you guys have to say, not from the Manchester United fan, not just from the ex-pros who've played the game and not just from Joel. We, <laughs> um, we, we want to hear what you guys have to say. So get involved in the comments below. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to Five as well. Um, I want to talk about Harry Kane 
and Wayne Rooney. And also Alan Shearer. I want to know, can Harry Kane go down as England's greatest ever player? Cool. Anton, we'll start with you. Why are you coming to me first? What? <laughs> what do you mean? It's an easy question, isn't it? So, easy answer. Um, <laughs> I never played against Harry Kane. Mm-hmm. Um, I left England by the time he came into to the um, into the Premier League. Honestly, I think he's one of those. You give him a chance around the box, it's a goal. I think, but outside of that, I don't think he would have been that big of a problem. Wayne Rooney, on the other hand, has got levels. And I'm not saying Harry Kane hasn't, because Harry Kane can drop off and play passes. But some Harry, in terms of playing up against somebody, the nasty streak and the bullish streak that Wayne Rooney's got, I think would be harder to play against than, than Harry Kane. That's just my observation. Mm. Um, when you look at what, what Wayne Rooney done as a kid to, at 16, announced himself the way that he did. And his longevity of consistency that he had. Fizzled out by 28, 29 though, didn't he? No, but he was there no. from 16 all the way no. through, man. Doing an in I wouldn't say fizzled things. out. I wouldn't say fizzled out. Just adapted out. his game. By the time he went to Everton, he was for, and I forgot a man. You mean he's going from the halfway even, line, even, mate, even taking before, the mic, oh, he was. Cool, yeah, but he's got quality, so he's going to do that once. That's yeah, like, but that's, that's like Vidic saying, like, saying that when like, he didn't look after himself, so, he could have prolonged his career to like, stay at the highest level. That's, that's, like, mean saying, that's like, like saying, like that's like saying when Rio went to, to, to QPR. Yeah, but he had a back injury by then. It's different. But wear and tear that um, Wayne Rooney had. Hey, I'm just putting it out there. I just think... Wayne Rooney don't get the credit that he that he deserves. Personally, having played against him, and listen, Harry Kane is top, top draw. I want to see him in a top team. I think it's down to trophies, Danny. What do you reckon? Because nah, if, if, if Harry Kane's, job, if Harry nah, Kane's sitting there with nah. like six Premier League trophies by now, which he probably deserves with the amount of goals that he scored, yeah. I think no. we're going, ooh. Nah. Ooh. Well, that, let's see what Danny... You know, Danny? Da Danny, what are you saying on this? I like it how Anton got away with uh, not bringing in Shearer there in that debate. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, Shearer is part of this. Shearer is part of this. Is he? Yeah. Is he? By the there? way, sorry. Before you go, Dan, <laughs> Shearer has to be in it as well. Yeah, he is. Reason, he is and he I'll is. give you a he story. Is. Right, For my second game in the Premier League was away at St James's Park. Yeah, the ball bounced in the middle of the pitch, and it bounced and it went up in the air, and. I'm looking at a boy and I'm licking my lips, man. I'm like, yeah, this is mine. And I swear to you, big Alan Shearer stepped across me, put his hand across me, and he's like, almost like he's looked at me and went, stay there, little boy, stay there. The way that he manhandled me was a joke. He was a joke. Of he was a joke yeah. of a footballer. Yeah, he was. A joke of a He footballer. is actually the one who doesn't get the respect he deserves. He don't get respect, but, no. I think. But um, yeah, Danny, um, where where do you stand on this, including Alan Shearer as well? Um, again, I echo all the compliments for all of them. Um, I would, I think Rooney's the most talented English player I've ever seen. Um, I was lucky enough to play against him and with him on a few occasions. I was actually there when he made his debut for England. It was ridiculous how comfortable he was. Really? We came on at half time. We came on at half time against Australia, I think it was. That was Upton Park when it I was there. <laughs> yeah. Danny, what was he what was he like? Sorry, Danny, to interrupt. It's just one of those stories. So I'm so sorry, but you trained with him a few days before. Could you see it already before he stepped out on the pitch? Yeah. Super touch, super confident in himself, had a presence, like a strength and an aura. All the great ones do. Stevie had it when he first stepped foot on the training pitch. Um, just a quiet, he was, in the early days, he had a quietness about him, but a, a, a confidence, not an arrogance. Um, he could play as a 10, he could play as a nine, play right wing, play centre mid. He, he was the most talented. He could edit, he could take free kicks, play through balls, score six yards from six, you know, little tappings. He would be the most talented in terms of what, what I've seen. Shearer and Kane, who are more strikers, if you like, Rooney could do that as a striker. But the difference between Shearer and Kane, for me, 
Um, I know Kane can drop off and he's probably a better passer and more complete with his technical ability, but Shearer would always... I, I would want Shearer ahead of Kane because I think it, when you're deep in the trenches, I think Shearer would be there for you. Sometimes Kane's gone missing. Uh, when I say gone missing, that's not doubting his talent and what a wonderful player he is. I'm talking about big games and the big moments for Tottenham. We haven't, you know, semi-finals, finals. Uh, now, you could argue Shearer didn't win things at Newcastle, but he, he he was the main man Blackburn won the year and he and every year top scorer at Newcastle, pushing them nearly to a title. But I just mean more like, if you look at, I don't know, it, Shearer had that toughness about him where, you know the Everton game recently where Kane's gone over? Yeah. Where Dacor, was it Dacor yeah. sent off? Yeah, it was Dacor, yeah. Can you picture Alan Shearer or Wayne Rooney no. going down like that? Harry Kane's just nice, isn't he? No, he's just, he's a, I, I think he doesn't have that grip. That's very unfair to say because what he's done for Spurs this season, right? Spurs is getting slapped every week, you know? And every time you look at the score sheet, even if you look at the, the Liverpool game that was just played a few days ago, who steps up first? You know what I mean? I, 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 mm. I, I never played with any of them, but I think it's, it's very unfair to say that he's not with you in the trenches because his back's hurting right now with the way he's carried Spurs. Yeah, that's, in his, that's with his ability. Tell you what I mean. Maybe, maybe the wrong wording. But what I mean is this. When you're losing 3-0 somewhere or 2-0 or, you know, you're getting hammered in the early part of a game, what do you think you would see Ray Wayne Rooney and Shearer doing on the pitch? What, what, what Harry Kane did on Sunday? No, it isn't just score a goal even though the team's been crap. It's going around, getting in people's faces, kicking people, saying, oi, listen, oh, we're cameras. getting back into this. And it's not for the, for the cameras. For the cameras. You know it's what? what real winners do. Joel, Joel, That's what it is. Joel, yeah. let me, let, let, and Danny, you might agree with this, you might not, but you see footballers, at, we look at things, when we look at players, Thank the you. first thing that comes to, to mind is, <laughs> if things, if things are going bad, he's doing it, let him do it. If things are, if things are going bad, can I look to my left and can I look to my right and know that these guys are going to be with me? That's the, as footballers, that's the first thing we really look at. What's their minerals? What's their mental state of mind? That's what we look at. And that, I think that's the reason why Danny's saying in terms of the, the mentality is different. Not to score goals, but when things are going tough, when things are going bad, who would you rather have in your team? So would you say Haaland has the minerals because he's a goal scorer when times go down or are we yet to see that i think we're yet to see that he ain't had, he hasn't had a he hasn't had a, a bad patch yet. he ain't had a patch where the team's struggling he's not had that patch yet we're yet to see that another thing for me right because erlen harland you know some people are obviously breaking records galore goal machine gary neville obviously described him the other day you know, cheat code, got a bit of the Ronaldo finishing, you got a bit of the strength for drug, but you got a bit of this, he's a machine and he's all of this. But the reason why I'm uncomfortable with putting players like who just get sheer numbers ahead of some top guys is because look at someone like Thierry Henry then, yeah? Was Alan Shearer better than Thierry Henry? No. Right, he wasn't. If you're looking at Haaland, he's an absolute goal machine. And this goes down to what Danny's saying. If, if City aren't functioning well, is Haaland going to go and get the ball and change City's fortunes? Or do they need to keep supplying him, keep feeding him? Yes, he'll finish his dinner till the cows come home. But he can't, I don't think Haaland can grab the game by the scruff of the neck and change it and turn it on its head. He needs the supply line in from De Bruyne. He needs to be, you know, running in behind. Yep, yeah, in the six yard box, someone find him, pinpoint cross. He's in the right place at the right time. I'm not knocking Harlan, I think he's, he think he's exceptional. But when it comes to the top, top draw, and this is what I put Rooney in, and this is what I'm putting to like the likes of Thierry Henry in, I think it's a different kettle of fish. The same way like how Mbappe, you know, people saying like, look at, look at Harlan versus Mbappe. Yeah, Harlan's gonna outscore a lot of these guys, a lot of our favourite guys. Not in the World Cup. Yeah, well, they, not in the not World, in the World Cup, Cup. plays for Norway. But yeah, he's going he's gonna to outscore a lot of our favourite players. But that's why we can't do this thing on numbers, guys. Harry Kane is going to outscore Alan Shearer. Yeah? So he's, gonna out, he's already outscored um, uh, Rooney, right? But my, yeah. But, but yeah, but pretty much, yeah. Andy Cole in a season. Andy, Cole, well. Andy Cole didn't even take one penalty in his third highest goal scorer on, on, um, in, the, in the league, in the he Premier League. a joke, Andy A Cole. joke. So what I'm saying is, is I, I think Wayne Rooney is the greatest English player ever. Would you, would you agree with that, Danny? I mean, it's, it's tight. 
Um, but yeah, I understand where you're coming from. He's 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 arguably the most talented. So yeah, I, I tend to I tend to agree with you. Danny's agreeing with me. I'll take that. What are you saying, Anton? I I love Wayne Rooney. I love him as a person. I love him as a player. I loved playing against him. Um, naturally gifted, and I have to agree, he's England's best player. But the Hod has to be just the Hod's a joke. <laughs> Massive Hod. respect to him, hundred percent. For Hod, I'd, I'd done a game, start of the season at West Ham with him, and his insight. Mm. You got to remember, he's been out of the game many, many years. His insight and his knowledge on what he was looking at in players. Forget when the ball was around them. What are they doing when the ball ain't around them? When they've, when they've got, not when they're defending. When they've got the ball, what, what's their body shape like? His attention to detail was mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And it just tells you when you speak to Tottenham fans and England fans, they all speak about the Hod. And Rio's got stories about Hod from when he was um, the England manager about talks they they would have. I'll leave them for Rio to tell to tell mm. the stories because they're his stories. Uh, but the HUD was a joke, bro. But Big Wayne man. Rooney, I think, would be the, the I'd say, is the greatest. Dan, that's that's three there now, that's, Joel. Um, no, you know, no, nah, I was just gonna say, Danny. Um, I was watching a, a show and it had uh, Ian Wright yesterday, actually. Ian Wright and um, Glenn Hoddle. Why are you always trying to bring that to us? No, wait, listen. <laughs> and uh, and I noticed Wright, he still calls him Gaffer, you know, even on the show, like. The respect for Glenn Hoddle was just crazy in it. We did an interview, a special with him on Bible 5. Check sure. it out if you haven't seen. But yeah, the, the respect is massive over there, isn't it? Oh, massive. I mean, he's he's a wonderful guy. I've, I've spent time with him and worked with him myself. I, I agree with what Anson's saying, his attention to detail. But I mean, as a player, it's always hard for us to compare people who you weren't around in the, you know, mm -hmm. up against. We could see his silks and his, his passing and his goals and stuff. But did he have... Did he have that ability to over 10, 12 years to win everything and have that fire in his belly to do it every season at one of the biggest clubs compared to Wayne or some of the other players? I'm not sure, but he was certainly one of the most gifted we've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and we are talking, let's be honest, we, you know, we're picking between, we, we were talking about Shearer, Harry Kane, Wayne Rooney, you know, Gerard, people like that. We are talking about the cream of the crop. Any little bits of criticism or he's not this or he's not that, you know, it, it it makes us sound like we're being harsh, but we we are comparing some of the greatest players we've ever seen in in England. Yeah, and that's why Rain Rooney is the best. Last one, Danny. Cheers for joining us. I'll see you again next week. See you next week. And now, obviously, for the Chelsea take, it's none other than our resident Matty. Still not safe. Thirty nine point settings. Talk to us. <laughs> Talk to us. You 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 you've been famous. You you've you've made it to internet fame. You know, I think people need to come to you for accumulated predictions and things like that. But um a tough night, a tough night at the Emirates. Yeah, I mean I've got the predictions. We're amortizing the points, not just the contracts. In fact, we're amortizing the goals. We've got our goal of the month already. So it's it's tough, it's not easy. Um to get bopped by our nearest and dearest Joel Bayer's Arsenal. It's not, it's not nice. It's not nice. And um, I don't think we'll get another win this season. I don't think we'll get another point. We are looking like we're not going to be able to hit that 40 point mark, that, that mark that I've been asking us to hit for months. I've been asking for safety for months. And um, it, it appears we, we cannot compete. We don't have the, the capacity and everything that is going wrong um, is, is there to see, you know, whether it's the team, whether it's the manager, not taking any accountability. It's tough right now. I, I must say, I'm struggling. Is, is, look, my question is simple. Is it Chelsea as a whole as a club or is it Frank Lampard? Because, or is it both? Because at a current moment, like you just said, he's, I'm not really seeing him you, take... You can't put it on Frank. I'm, I'm asking, it's a question. No, you can't. How can you put it on Frank? Why? Well, hey, because, because, said that. What's he done? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not disputing Six that. out of six. Are I'm Chelsea not, that mate, bad, mate, Anton? Mate, let's get it, Anton, let's get this straight. Tuchel's got him 10 points. That's actually going to keep him in the league. Listen, I'm not disputing <laughs> I'm not disputing that. Man's coming into something where Potter was before him. Yeah. Potter didn't buy the players. They're not all these players. The club bought the players. Yeah. It's hard to just go, is it Lamps? Because the because the manager before him couldn't do it. So it's not like it's not like it's like what we, we compared to Tottenham. Conte's um comments are ringing true right now. 
I think when you look at Frank Lampard, it's because you look at his record across the whole, innit? And it just hasn't really yeah, been good. One. If you have, do you know what he's he is? One. All right. No way but looking at it. is it? And, and you're looking at the six out of the six losses. Is it? Is it all the players' fault or but the this, club's fault? Or, this is why, or but this is why I said last week, what did and you I've say? said many a times. Bringing Frank Lampard in now is stupid, in my opinion. You, I would have rather have bought Pochin. If cause I'm, I'm mentioning him because it looks like he's likely to take over. Yeah, I would have bought him in so he can assess what he's got to get rid of. Boy, ahead of the curve, Matisse. What say you? I, I, for me, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think anybody would do a brilliant job under these circumstances because the environment is simply compromised. It's contaminated. But I'm this close to dressing up in a tuxedo and going to. 007 Bond Street and filming myself because we're almost at that point, right? With Bournemouth, it will be it will be seven defeats. My my H2, thing with Lampard bro. right now is that this is this is like compound interest. He is only compounding our problems. He's not making it any better. When you see that three six one formation against Brentford, or you see that three five two of Gallagher and Sterling as a front two and Aspilicueta at wing back, that is not helping us. That is not putting us in a better light. That is not improving us or, or making the best out of a bad situation. This is not the first time that Chelsea have had issues. Chelsea last season was sanctioned. Chelsea last season couldn't tap an Oyster card on a TFL. Uh, you know, Chelsea last season couldn't get a, a bus to Middlesbrough, but we were still getting results. We got to two cup finals and we still managed to finish third in the league. I'm not here to tell you that it's all Lampard's fault, but Lampard is not making it any better. And it's because, in my opinion, he's not good enough to be managing at this level. It's very clear. When he speaks after the match, he's not given any accountability for his own tactics, for his own system, for his own setup. It's just hard work and people are not running the hard yards and putting the mileage in. You are picking the team. You are choosing to, to play the players like Sterling that you're saying are maybe not are looking like they're not performing at all against Arsenal. And Bamiya, <laughs> this is your decision. You chose to play these players, so you have to take responsibility. But I agree with you. It's not just Lampard. It cannot be. It has to be the whole the whole club. It has to be everything from the start. It has to even be pre-Roman. Let's be real. You know, it has to be the recruitment over the years, the, 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 the lack of direction, the lack of infrastructure in terms of recruitment. So it's, it's not just Lampard, but Lampard is not making it any better. And he's, his managerial career is going to pay the price for what we're watching right now because it is a shambles. Do you, do you know what's really sad about this situation? Even though I'm enjoying it, I can't lie to you. But do you know what's really sad for Chelsea supporters? That the team's on page two when it comes to the league. <laughs> and you're not even top no more, page two. <laughs> yeah. And... The possibility of a club legend, his status being ruined at the football club. I think I think Lamps is a legend football player. He's not going to be ruined. Yeah, I don't think it's getting, not. But, but there's still some like people. I'm seeing comments on Instagram where people are going, "Go back to the punditry, bro," and they're Chelsea fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but it is you know I mean? it is, it is he's going to get that. Mad. But football fans are also forgiven. If Lampard comes back in five years' time, and do you know what I mean, does does uh, one of those those uh, legends games or whatever, he will get clapped. He's not going to get booed. Yeah, know, he won't, he, he's still he's still, so he's still, he's still a still legend. Legend. legend player. It's not. It's not it won't be what it is. What it has been. It won't be what it has been. Maybe not. A bit like Cristiano Ronaldo. Like, listen. Cristiano, be, you, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, no, you left he's still a legend. Nah, Chris, yeah, Cristiano, but, Cristiano Ronaldo moved mad though, deliberately on purpose. Yeah. Like Lampard, yeah. <laughs> Lampard out of the goodness of his heart yeah. was, sitting, was sitting there chilling because no jobs are coming in right now. Yeah. Love Lamps. I think he's done amazing as a player. Yeah. But actually, it's his affinity to Chelsea and the fact that he has been an amazing player. That's got him in this privileged position, if, if I'm honest. Because, there's, because, there's an ego because of, there, yeah. right? There's an ego there. You have to be able to separate the player from the manager. But the whole reason why we're in this mess is because we have failed to separate the player from the manager. That's why he's in this job. He is not in this job because he is fully qualified. And many a fan, especially the armchair fan, think the exact same way. They can't separate the two. You're with Chelsea, whether you're a manager, or whether you're a player, it's the same thing. Mm. So after this stint, What's it look super like? Super Lampard yeah. does might he, does not be he, Super Lampard. No yeah, more. does he? Does he get? Does he get other jobs in the Prem? After I, don't, this? I don't see where. How? I, where does he go from here? How? I don't know. Well, I don't if you, well, the fact that he got the Chelsea job again in the first place. Yeah, but that's only the Lampard Chelsea. No, no, no other, no other Premier League. Would, Lee, would Lee's of this season gone? I tell you what, man. Oh, it hasn't gone good with Jesse Marshall. Let's get Lampard. No, nope. they wouldn't have done it. Would would when nope. Everton sacked their manager? Well, it was him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. him. Um, who else? Who else? <laughs> Leicester. When, when, when it looked Leicester. bad for Bournemouth in the beginning of the season, they went to Gary O'Neill. Mm. And look what Gary O'Neill's done. Mm -hmm. No one give no one give him a shot. And that and that's how you know it's actually disgusting what's going on at Chelsea because 
If Gary O'Neill can do that with Bournemouth and just get them fighting, and actually this is onto the players now. Them Chelsea players, yeah, you they can say- They're a disgrace. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you can say like there's too they many, are. they can't all they fit are. in a change room and all of this stuff. You can say that, we can talk about Lampard, Matisse is right, I think we're all right in Lampard. Mm. Them players are utterly right. disgrace. That was a London derby no, yesterday. Matisse, Matisse, before you come back here, I was talking to Irvin, the guy that runs 360 TV. <laughs> what yeah. guy? He said, they're criminals. Yeah. <laughs> Those Chelsea yeah, players frauds. are frauds. Yes. Those are his words. I yes. was bunning up Big because up he's a Chelsea fan as well. But yeah, like they've got to be a Bamiyang. Hooked off at half time. No, I felt sorry for him. No, but seriously, I felt sorry though, for him. seriously, I felt you're sorry just on that because of Arsenal it. ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, you're, you're rude though. Him. When you had nothing, when you had nothing, oh, yeah, I loved him. with the FA Cup and signed the thing, signed the thing. Don't do him like that. Don't, man. don't go and do I promos felt sorry for him. about. Felt sorry. sorry guys, it's in the it's contract. Personal. No, that's not in the contract. You've been, you've been, you've been you pro, yeah. When 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 the, when the Super Sunday people come to you and they say, listen, we need you to do this. Nah, you got to do it. There's other ways. You got to do it for the fans. You don't need to go and do a freaking pre-match promo. Seriously, you can. It was nothing personal because he didn't do anything that match, and there was nothing yesterday, so it was nothing personal. So you, you know, yeah, oh, like, it's true you know, though. But I might had nine touches. I think, I think the biggest <laughs> four thing, the, four, four for from, the kickoffs. <laughs> it's easy. It's, crazy. To, it's, it's easy to just say he was dead, and he was dead. Yeah, who Bamiyang? Mm. Bamiyang. Yeah. He was dead in the game. It's easy to say that, but when you look at the way Arsenal press, the you way Arsenal for him. played, you had nothing. Yeah, mm. for Chelsea not to see it and go, do you know what? Let's play over the press. Bamiyang's strengths are his pace. Let's let's try and get him involved in the game. That Kirio playing, they Kirio never, never ever. They didn't try. Put that. him under a bit. They didn't try. Put him it. under. They did. They, you know how much? Do you know how much they've, Arsenal have held Kirio back? Nah, rather not. Nah, let's 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 try. You know what? Chelsea at home. Go on then. I thought it was because he was left footed. Go on then. And he can't yeah, play the balance. Right the back. balance. I thought it was more look, down to the balance. Uh, uh, but look, the guy come into the most easiest game he could ever have come into. <laughs> It? It was, I thought it was going to be a tough game. I thought. Yeah, that's what I Lampard told thought Arsenal fans coming into this game that yes, you are going for a little bit of a stumble right now, and I know you guys have got PTSD from the results and the letting leads slip, but <laughs> we are Chelsea. built different. There is no, but there's nobody like us in this league right now. If Chelsea did not accumulate the points that they got at the start of the season, this team would get relegated. Do you see any fight in this team to deal with a relegation <laughs> battle? If we, in, if we were in, if we were in it, we would go down. I promise you, we would go down. We, you know, nobody can, nobody can tell me where we're going to get a result. We're not going to. We're, we're playing against Bournemouth they've won four out of the last five we have Manchester City away Man United away Newcastle at home and Nottingham Forest at home and Nottingham Forest <laughs> just beat Brighton yeah 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 39 Nottingham 39 Forest 39, just beat 39, Brighton. 39, 39, 39, 39. Right the point, just, uh, just lastly point Matisse, Matisse but just before we let you just before we let you go yeah I'm trying to give you like a glimmer of positivity yeah so I just want to ask you obviously Madueke scores a goal I know how that made you feel and even Mudrick coming on for 17 <laughs> minutes he did more in 17 minutes um, than Sterling done all game and done a lot of than, than a lot of, uh, of your attackers have done all season, actually. Is that the way forward for Lampard? Just play some of these younger players, let the, let the flair players play. Give me some vibes, give me something. Exactly, exactly, bro. That is, that is the bare minimum I expected from Frank Lampard. I wasn't expecting a coaching masterclass or to come and, you know, implement positional play. But at the bare minimum, play the young players because you can't tell me all of these players don't care. All of these players are not interested. Half of these guys won a Champions League and went through sanctions. The other half of them were signed in January. So they, some of them must care. So play the players that have a point to prove. Play the players that will be used under Poch. Why is Hakim Ziyech, who was on his way out to PSG on, on deadline day, why is he coming on and not a young player? Where's Lewis Hall? Where is Carney that was signed from Aston Villa for 20 million? Play the young players. We are not winning games regardless. We are being embarrassed. Why are you not giving the young players a chance? You want to be a manager that presses from the front, that, that plays attacking football, but yet you're not playing the attackers against Brentford. You're playing Sterling up front with Gallagher as a second striker. It doesn't make sense. And this is the, this is the type of indecisiveness and lack of direction that I'm talking about. If a serious coach comes into this situation, they have a clear blueprint. From the moment that Frank Lampard said... I'm going to give everybody a clean slate. I knew from that moment we were in trouble because, <laughs> because Pep, when Pep came into Man City, he didn't say, I'm going to give Joe Hart a clean slate. He said, there's my, there's, but there's the door. There's the office. There you go. Out you go. Bye bye. And it's harsh. But if you know what you want to implement as a manager, then, then, then you don't, you don't give everybody a chance because there's only certain players that can carry out the task of what you want to implement as a manager. And the rest of them can't. You need to know your team before you arrive. I'll tell you what he did do yesterday. That was mind boggling. When I saw the lineup, and I saw and I saw Kante in it, I was like, okay, cool. But then when I watched the game and I saw him in the ten, I said, oof. 
I said, what is this? <laughs> I can't even lie. I said, what is this? Everything that the man's not good at mm. is in that position. But I was straight freestyling though, because I actually looked at their midfield three and thought, actually, you got legs in Kovacic and Kante. That's not too bad. Enzo, um, my eyes are on him, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, chaos around Chelsea. But we, we got we got to look we got to look at Enzo but next admit, year. Hold him, hold him. I said this to my friend. He's a bit of a pretender for me. Don't he? He, I, he ain't I, really I, offering the angles. I, he ain't I, really yeah. I Kovacic, said, big man. Kante, said, big man. I said this to my friends yesterday in the group. I said, listen, you got you got rid of. Jorginho, yeah, got rid of him. You bought someone for 100 plus million and man's run overrunning your 100 plus million, million signing. That just speaks volumes for me. Mm. Mm. That, that speaks bad. volumes for me. And people, people, yeah, Jorginho, he can't get around the pitch. No. Right? But from when he's outrunning a 100 million pound player or 100 million pound plus yeah. pay, player, I should say, then boy, was it the right decision? Because I'm with you. He's lucky it's early. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. There's Bit question marks on it? Enzo. I think I think Enzo is gonna be a quality player. I'm 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 looking at the I'm looking at the the way that the team's been set up. Like you said, with Kante bursting forward, making the final pass of four v two, and and we're still not getting a shot off a goal. Those are the type of moments I'm looking at, and I'm thinking again, this is how you've set them up. You've put players in areas, in zones that they're not comfortable in and you're asking them to do things that they can't do. I saw Kante putting in crosses against Brentford. I saw him going off for headers against Real Madrid to try and score goals. This is what we're doing. This is what we're dealing with right now. So I think it's, at, at this point, I agree with you. Enzo was poor. He, he got nutmeg for the first goal. Got nutmegs from about 20 yards. Yeah, and, 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 and Odegaard, Odegaard's arriving late into the box like Frank Lampard against the man himself. That's what I said. But... I think all of these players, they've shown at some point that they are top players, whether it's at the World Cup, whether it's at Man City in the Euros for Sterling. I think right now you just have to take a look at two things mainly, which is, first of all, the squad is bloated and that hasn't been trimmed down by a manager who's decisive and knows what he wants. And the level of coaching and the level of tactics is not on the level that needs to be to be definitively kind of talking about a player and saying they're they're not they're they're completely finished. I agree that the criticism is is definitely warranted, but in terms of next season, I wouldn't be surprised if half these players we're questioning right now actually start to look like real footballers next mm. season under somebody serious. Listen, Matisse, big up for coming through. I know it's pain. I know it's I know you're looking for vibes. I know you're actually looking just for one more point to hit the 4-0, but um, hopefully for your for your sanity because we like you. Do you know what I'm saying? Hopefully you can get the point in the next four games. Um, but yeah, good luck, bro. Good luck, thank you, bro. Thank you. Okay, guys, we've come to the end of this week's episode of the Take On. Thank you for joining us. Some people leave in the studio in better shape than others. Some with some decent takes, and some with some, quite frankly. Embarrassing, embarrassing, trying to talk about legends of the game in the way that you've done. I think, I think you've done yourself a disservice. In fact, you might need to get back into this chair because over I, that side. I think I haven't. I it's, think I it's, haven't. Not, it's not that. What would you rate his performance out of? It's like Arsenal, isn't it? He just talked about <laughs> Arsenal all the time. Improving. It's imp he's just improving. Like, <laughs> he's 45% a winner. <laughs> Smash a like on this video, subscribe <laughs> to the channel if you are new and we'll be back again with another episode for you guys. Take care, peace.